Hello and welcome to today's Latin American History lesson, which is on Hispanic contributions made to the United States. The materials you will need for today will be a piece of notebook paper, or a journal if you have one, a pen, or a pencil. Your learning objective will be to understand how Hispanics have made significant contributions to the United States, which is the Florida State Statute 1003.42p. There are many Hispanic Latinos that have made significant contributions to the United States. However, for today, we are going to begin with focusing on those mentioned in our previous two lessons, which were Los Braceros, Cesar Chavez, Dolores Huerta, and Silvia Mendez. So let's take a moment and review what you have learned. Let's first begin with determining what bracero means. Is it one that works with their legs, one that works with their feet, or one that works with their arms? If you chose one that works with their arms, you are correct. The braceros worked with their arms and hands. If you remember, when the braceros were screened for the bracero program, their hands were closely examined for calluses. Because if they had calluses, then this meant that they had experience working in the fields. Who were the braceros? Were they Cuban refugees? Were they temporary Mexican guest workers? Or were they Puerto Rican soldiers? Yes, that is correct. They were temporary Mexican guest workers. Why were the braceros, who were temporary Mexican guest workers, brought to the United States? Was it to help fill the void in agricultural work during World War II? Was it to help monitor our borders during World War II? Or was it to help translate at schools during World War II? Correct, the braceros were brought to help fill the void in agricultural work during World War II. This temporary wartime labor was known as the Bracero Program, and the Bracero Agreement was signed between the United States and Mexico on August 4th, 1942. What was the Bracero Agreement also known as? Was it the Fair Farm Labor Program Agreement? Was it the Chicano Farm Labor Program Agreement? Or was it the Mexican Farm Labor Program Agreement? It was the Mexican Farm Labor Program Agreement. And as you may recall, this agreement outlined how the Mexicans would be brought to the United States, what their wages would be, and the free housing, transportation, health care, and food they would receive. It was also indicated that there would be no discrimination against the Mexican nationals. In our previous lesson, you were asked how Los Braceros compared to our current farm workers, who, by the way, have been referred to as the unsung heroes. So how are they similar? As we mentioned during our previous lesson, they both work with their arms and hands. But let's also think about this. Would they both be considered essential workers during a time of need? I'll give you a moment to jot your thoughts. If you said yes, that would be correct, because they are both providing a much needed labor necessity in order for our families to have food on their table. 
Now let's review what you have learned about Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta from the previous lesson. Which one founded the United Farm Workers Union? Was it Cesar Chavez or Dolores Huerta? They both did, excellent. Now let's play a little bingo as we review. Pick one of the two cards and please make sure to keep track of your card as we play. There are only three questions and there's a free space. So here we go. Question number one, who coined the phrase, si se puede, yes we can. Who coined the phrase, si se puede, yes we can. If you chose Dolores Huerta, you are correct. You'll also find Dolores Huerta on this card as well, on the right side. Question number two. What was the movement called when Mexican American farm workers were organized to fight for respect, justice, and equality? What was the movement called when Mexican American farm workers were organized to fight for respect, justice, and equality. La causa, good job. La causa. Last question. Who was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Clinton. Who was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Clinton? Cesar Chavez, good job. You'll find Cesar Chavez here and you'll find Cesar Chavez over here. And if you pick the first card, on the left side, bingo, congratulations. Go ahead and pat yourself on the back. Right here, bingo. In the 1940s, there were signs such as this one in public areas and restaurants that said, no dogs, no Negroes, no Mexicans. How do you think this sign made the African-American and Mexican-American people feel during that time? I'll give you a few seconds to write your thoughts. And how would it make you feel if your race and ethnicity would be indicated on this sign? And if your race and or ethnicity is indicated on this sign, what were your initial thoughts once you saw it? In the previous lesson, we also learned that in the 1940s, there was ethnic prejudice and discrimination that occurred in the schools between Mexican Americans and Anglo Americans in many states such as California. Many of the schools were segregated at the time. Why is Sylvia Mendez such an important individual? Do you remember who she is? Let's see. Was Silvia Mendez a civil rights activist of Mexican and Puerto Rican descent? Was she at eight years old when her parents attempted to enroll her at the Westminster School, which was an all white school, where she was denied and told to go to the all Mexican school? Or was Sylvia Mendez awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama? Or all of the above? It is all of the above. Good job. What is the significance of the 1947 Mendez versus Westminster federal court case? 
Was it that it violated the 14th Amendment? Was it that it was the first case to hold that school segregation itself is unconstitutional? Or was it the prelude to the Brown versus Board of Education Landmarks Supreme Court case? Or all of the above? It is all of the above. And by the way, why was the Brown versus Board of Education case so important? Well, remember, because it ended racial segregation in all of the schools in the United States in 1954. Sylvia Mendez continues to advocate for excellence and equality. And she is so proud to see that on April 14, 2007, the United States Postal Service created a stamp in honor of the 60th anniversary of the Mendez versus Westminster court case. As we come to a close today, do you think you have a better understanding of how Hispanics have made significant contributions to the United States? I am certain that you do. Good job, everyone. Thank you so much for participating today. Until next time, adios.